as soon as the movie starts getting up and living and breathing and talking for itself, you realize that this perspective is so askew. Before I was really well researched or before I like really knew that I could do this, I said yes based on a sort of hunch and based purely on the fact that this was sparkly and attractive and ambitious and um, big. everything. They don't. I then read the script and it was very, very concisely drawn and it covers three days of her life that is kind of ambiguously placed over the course of one or two Christmases, a moment of pressure and chaos and trauma that pushes her to make ultimately one of the biggest decisions she's ever had to make in her life. It just felt like if you're not gonna do things like this then as an actor, then, then what are you doing? Initially it was, just about ingesting as much of her as I possibly could. Every picture, every interview, every memoir I kind of could get my hands on. And then I had a beautiful, brilliant artist of a dialect coach named William Conacher, who's actually done all of the Dianas. The script definitely indicates that it's gonna be a, a, a fairly first person um, and an immersive experience. Pablo's whole approach to this was not about providing any new information or sort of like covering the very well-rounded bases that we all know in terms of what actually happened, but really to kind of step inside of her completely. And how literally he meant that, I did not know. It is, it is such a sort of fantasy. It, it really is more of a tone poem than any semblance of a biopic. For me, the most impressive thing and the most defining thing about her is that even though she has this disarming and sort of casual air, you never know what's going on inside of there. She's, she's kind of full of contradictions. She wears her heart on her sleeve. She can't really hide anything, but at the same time, she's really good at making other people feel comfortable even though she is not necessarily feeling great. And so I could learn all of this like, you know, like the back of my hand, but then it really kind of was about forgetting the detail and, and allowing yourself to be present enough to be um, impulsive and, and spontaneous, because I think that her energy characteristic of hers is just alive, just overwhelmingly alive. Sometimes you feel crazy, it doesn't mean that you are, but there are times where, you know, I think the only way to really get something really true is to go full subjective, extreme poetry. Because I think that, you know, there are times where life just feels like so surreal and kind of out of control. The movie needed to kind of spin off into oblivion in order to find like a grounded moment in the end where you go, oh, well, we knew what she did after all of this. It had rage and exuberance and truthfulness um, that was so attractive and, and so easy to become a sort of really protective kind of advocate for. Uh, even before I knew all the details, I just sort of was drawn to her and felt like, you know, like I wanted, wanted to be on her team or something. There was one element of the movie that was completely out of my control, which was this dance sequence. I was always sort of expected to just respond to whatever song was put on, whatever outfit we chose, whichever location we were in at the time. And so what we were able to do with this small sequence was kind of distill an entire life into a few moments because, you know, we're not doing her whole life. And so that was kind of as close as I could get to the other aspects of her life that took place, not necessarily over this three days, but just in general. Uh, felt like we were in the right place.